Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We've got a great show for you today. Robbie Ferguson breaking down all of the frankly amazing immutable news that has come out since we last saw you, which was, I don't know, a month and a half ago, but a lot has happened. We've got big news on the ZK EDM front. We have big news on the partnership front, great updates in terms of existing immutable games. All of that is going to start right now. But first, if you have been enjoying this content, please do subscribe to the channel, comment below, leave a like. We love hearing from y'all. So let us know what you think. All right, Robbie, diving right into the big, big news, which is that the immutable ZK EVM mainnet early access launch has launched. It's happened. The launch is here. I feel like I've been excited and waiting for this as I was with you guys at GDC when you first announced this was coming last year, almost a year ago now. Uh, talk to us about this. What does this mean? And what should folks take away from it? Oh, look, I think it's a pretty monumental feat. This is the first gaming focused, ZK powered, EVM compatible chain. And it's been our mission since day one of building on Ethereum to be using both the security of Ethereum, which is why we always prioritize ZK. But when we made that decision four years ago, the only thing that was ready was app specific rollups, uh, such as Immutable X, which, which uses StarkX for its proofs. To have that plus the open liquidity and the native interoperability of being able to drag and drop smart contracts from Ethereum L1 and have full EVM compatibility, not just transpilability, is uh, a huge shift. Um, so we're extremely excited. And it's obviously early access. So we're starting phase one, deploy list, uh, a very limited subset of customers. I think there's roughly uh, 10 games and, and sort of a, a few uh, core infrastructure pieces who'll be integrating just while we test out all of the... Uh, essentially way the network is working, um, gas optimization, making sure that there's uh, no fundamental bugs and, and we sort of uh, build towards phase two, which is anyone can deploy uh, and we start to see a lot of these games go live. The timeline for that will be roughly the end of March from when we're pushing go on a major marketing launch. We'll have uh, many of these games starting to go live. So I'd say right now uh, it's a, a sort of very large and loud victory for engineering. It's going to be a very quiet victory uh, publicly. That's intentional. Um, we're going to be gearing up as this goes into a anyone can build in it open chain, um, which I'm, I'm really excited for. Well, congratulations to your team, to your engineering team. I know many skipped a Christmas break to, to make this happen. So uh, honestly, just congratulations all around. In other product news, uh, we actually didn't talk about the Immutable Passport launch, which happened towards the end of December because we took our break. We did take a break for Christmas and other things. So we, we haven't talked about that. And, and you've got some gas free for gamers announcements. So, so talk to us about some of the other, the other uh, product pieces here. So the nice thing is these two work perfectly together. So Immutable Passport is our self-custodial but easy sign-on wallet. That converts five times better than the nearest competitors. And the whole vision is if you're onboarding as a regular Web2 user and you've never used Web3 before, you shouldn't have to look, write down your seed words. You shouldn't even have to learn what crypto is. It should be as seamless as paying for an in-app transaction by double-clicking with Face ID or signing on with email, which is precisely the onboarding funnel of a passport. That is now live and in production uh, with games, which is really exciting and it's already integrated into immutable CKVM early access. So it'll be ready from day one. And the second thing we released, which I'm really excited about is the number one question I got when we were building, uh, when we announced immutable ZKVM from immutable X is one of immutable X's killer value propositions is zero gas fees because it was an app specific rollup and we can abstract a lot of that away and via Validium, it was incredibly scalable. How are we going to accomplish the same value proposition with immutable ZKVM? Uh, and we've worked very hard and we'll be launching full gas sponsorship so that any player can be paid for their gas via the game running that network. And we'll be helping to, to obviously uh, sort of kickstart a lot of that with these games as well. And what this means is, let's say you have a transaction that might give a, a game $10 of value. Currently the friction point is if they have to purchase uh, Ethereum in order to pay for the gas, you may lose far more in conversions than what it would cost to actually just subsidize that transaction because the friction and the gas fee is going to be incredibly low on ZK EVM. It's going to be fractions of a cent because it's Validium for most operations. But the reduction in conversion is enormous if a player doesn't have Ethereum even to start with. And everything we're doing is trying to be creating sensible solutions towards this problem of how do you preserve the value of, of Web3 while having onboarding and, and user experience become easy enough that you can genuinely go mainstream. And so now a game can say load up $100,000 of gas fees they can heuristically choose what transactions they want to pay for. 
anything about a certain value, any kind of uh, in-game transaction, and they can fully sponsor those transactions on behalf of the end user. So we're calling this uh, you know, gas-free for gamers. Uh, I'm really, really excited about it. I think it's gonna be one of the killer features with the global order book, with enforceable royalties, uh, with, with passport for onboarding uh, within the Aussie KVM. I love it. Speaking of going mainstream, you've got to to solve the technical challenges which y'all are working on, and then you got to get the right games building on Web3. So I'd love to talk a little bit about partnerships here. We're a month into the year, and already I feel like there's, there's a lot going on in terms of immutable partnerships. Can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, it's been two of our best months ever. Uh, So if you have a look over uh, December and January, which included a a two-week shutdown for, as you say, everyone but the engineering team (laughs) working on shipping ZKVM, uh, we actually had two of our biggest months on record. I think the only month that was bigger was the month immediately after the Polygon partnership where all of the games who were competing over sort of said, well, this is great. We're just going to, you know, immediately go with both. Um, But we've onboarded now 50 games in the last two Two months. months. Um, Yeah, so if you you take out the break, it's more than one a day. Um, and these are not random sort of low value games. These are games that are all VC backed that pass our bar to be targeted by biz dev uh, and, and we'll have our full support on the platform success side. Um, we often get this question of is sort of this is enormous scale. How are you going to be uh, supporting everything? Yeah. And obviously, they're, they're the you know, super high tier ones we, we do kind of go all out for, the, you know, the top 30 or 40. But we're at the point where just given that this, uh, our ability to focus on gaming means we can actually scale support to a lot of these people. Um, and it means that our products are fundamentally built for, for these people. So I'm really excited. I mean, some of the big ones you've probably seen, uh, Treeverse uh, and uh, the Endless Clouds portfolio from, from Loopify. We're really excited to be working with uh, Cool Cats, Heroes Chained, Katana Inu, many of these with sort of eight figures in funding. I'm going to go through a, a more of a list of just some of the ones we've announced. Cool Cats Match Quest. So they're building a Match 3 mobile casual experience, going for a very large amount of users. Danu Games, which is building the award-winning MMORPG Avalon. Chrono Forge, which is a multiplayer action RPG. Xverse, multiplayer shooting game powered by AI. Uldor, a Web3 MMO featuring epic beast fights. So MMOs are actually one of our more popular categories on, on the platform, along with TCGs. And now sort of mobile RPGs is coming up in, in portfolio as well. Space Falcon, uh, which is launching a PC game, uh, Aviatrix Cursed Stone, MMORPG, that has a digital integration. Dark Machine, a mech team, uh, team shooter game, Citizen Conflict, Blade of God X, Galactico Manager, Arcbound, Sail Wars, and a ton more, which we, we haven't announced yet. So uh, I, I think it's been a phenomenal job by both the, the BD team, but also by the product team, who has built so many things that just resonate so much right now. Mm-hmm. I mean... Some of these games, as soon as you say the only place you can get enforceable royalties on a platform, this is the only platform for them. Um, some of them you know, go very deep and care extremely about user onboarding. Some of them care a lot about uh, sort of hype and liquidity and, and their, the global order book, our partnership with Superverse and Elio Trades matters a, a lot. So I think we're able to really offer the full spectrum from sort of fully on-chain Web3 native games to people just optimizing for invisible transactions in a fully mainstream experience, which is really exciting. Amazing. Yeah. And, and in addition to all the new games, you have announcements coming out around your existing games. I know Metalcore, which folks are psyched about. I loved my interview with the Metalcore team. Yeah. So they, they just went into beta. So you can play test that right now. Obviously, Guild of Guardians is doing a full deployment in Canada at the moment, which is going really well uh, in preparation for the, for the mainstream launch. And I actually, I wanted to explain a bit about this. People ask, why are they going straight to Web3 Global Publishing? The most common paradigm for a successful games company to, to launch a, a game will typically be, especially for mobile games, regional testing, where they're going to optimize day one and day seven retention, in particular, sometimes a bit of day 30, and get them up to world-class standards by testing with a cohort. And you also get to test acquisition costs. And once those numbers are good enough, it's press the big red button on global deployment, uh, incorporate full monetization. So that's exactly the process we're going through with Guild of Guardians. Many of our top games will, will be doing that as well. And I think that's why we'll see this sort of phased deployment over a lot of the portfolio. And I will say to plug to plug some more content on the channel, we uh, we do have, I, I sat down with Justin Hulog and we talked about strategically how they're pulling that off in Canada and what other games and other and even players can take away from this and, and how to really build a great game. So folks should keep their eye out for that because that's coming out soon on the channel as well. And lastly here, would love to have you talk a little bit while we're, we're staying on Immutable here, like talk about the ecosystem broadly. How, what are you guys working on sort of in, in throughout the ecosystem aside from what we've, we've just covered? 
Uh, so Spear Marketplace just deployed uh, on early access, which is really exciting uh, from the Merit Circle team. We're obviously going really deep with, with that team. And we have, I think, 50 dApps and, and sort of infrastructure signed up to, to be deploying in the uh, early phases, which is excellent. It's a ton. Our strategy very much, though, is sort of get sufficient infrastructure for day one so everything can, can be uh, super liquid and successful. But really, we think make the game successful, make the application successful, and everything is going to come. And this is very interesting because it's not the same strategy as most other L1s. A lot of other L1s are huge incentives for DeFi and yield farming from day one, try and get sort of the, the maximum amount on the chain as possible. We're putting all of that effort into making games successful because our thesis is if you can have a million or 10 million uh, on-chain customers via a game, that is when the value of building DeFi, you don't even have to incentivize. Everyone wants to build loan protocols for gaming assets. Everyone wants to build uh, futures and, and options contracts for the fundamental primary uh, liquidity and, and, and volume that exists. And I think our overall thesis in the space is it's almost application light, which is not controversial, but as soon as you have the users, and as soon as you have genuine primary demand, everything else automatically is, is built. So I think this is actually the fastest way to, to build this flywheel. And it's also the financial services or the D financial services will actually be servicing a primary use case, which is how they're supposed to exist rather than sort of existing inherently for the purpose of pumping numbers, being incentivized, et cetera, which has sort of been the, uh, the playbook across the rest of the ecosystem. So I, I, I'm excited to see as these applications succeed, what that drives in terms of magnetism of, of more ecosystem development. Mm -hmm. My producer and I have been joking, like, it's the gameplay, stupid. You know, it's sort of like you, you build these great games and everybody else will follow to service that, that customer that's there. Well, Vitalik even said today, I can get up this quote, I retweeted it. Bad GameFi is using financial speculation as a substitute for fun. Blockchain games need to be fun as games. Uh, and he says, approximate quote, he said many times. And he says the same thing for crypto social. The fundamental utility of this stuff has to be, I would play this even if Web3 weren't present. And if you have that, then suddenly you have this enormous open ecosystem that people genuinely want to use, where there's real demand and all of these derivatives and financial products are connecting that, but you can't, if you apply zero to anything, which is what you get if it's just incentivized, you get zero. Mm -hmm. Yep. It should be the, the fuel that's supercharging things, not the, the reason to be in and of itself. Well, let's take a moment now. Would love to take some community questions. It's been a minute since we've gotten community questions. Uh, we have one from Anon274. <laughs> will games have their own chains or roll-ups or will everything be built on ZKEVM? and will be handled seamlessly without any trouble. Uh, we will have more to announce here, um, but you know, horizontal scalability is incredibly important to us. Uh, we, we have a lot planned uh, to, to kind of be shared here over the next few months. All right, second question from Rhino. They ask, who is your primary competitor now? It was once Polygon, but now y'all are partners. So, so perhaps not competition in the same way. And the no subsidized gas is really the difference maker with, with IMX. So in, in today's landscape, who do you see as your, your primary competitor? Yeah, I would say back in end of 22, it definitely was Polygon. I mean, we, we saw them the most in deals. Uh, I think if you see that graph, you know, there was roughly a billion dollars into each of our gaming ecosystems in 2022 which was two thirds of the whole gaming space. And that partnership has been so successful. We've, we've basically seen those two market shares combined. So our, our rough market shares jump from 35% to 70%, uh, which I think Masari covered in their, in their latest research report. Honestly, I, our primary competitor now, we really consider as the Web2 incumbents who are keeping an ecosystem where people can't trade their assets for real value. And I think that's almost the whole space. I, like, I, I don't get upset anytime a competitor wins because the category is so small, it is not zero sum. If we can take a good chunk of this $150 billion a year that is spent on in-game items and we can convert it into an open and tradable ecosystem, everyone is going to win. And there's going to be this enormous new ecosystem that unfolds as you know we power a trillion dollars of DeFi and financial uh, instruments on top of that as we take the ownership of digital goods beyond and we start to tokenize real world assets and we start to tokenize property systems and title systems. And so I very much do not believe actually it's, it's zero sum. The worst thing we can do is sort of infight and lose sight of who the real competitor and, and, and what the real goal we're trying to deliver is. And competition ultimately makes everyone compete better, build better products and ship much faster. So I, I think I very much welcome it from, from that angle. We feel very comfortable in our, our market share for gaming at the moment. Uh, the goal is just how do we make these games as successful as possible this year and really have something which I think as soon as you have a story around a game that is so mainstream successful and makes its creators and users so much money, 
that will fundamentally change the brand of, you know, maybe it's an NFT, maybe people don't consider that the branding. I don't think that's important if you're making the user experience right. But that creator story is what's going to shift the entire narrative. And from there, it's going to explode. I mean, look at the investment you're getting today with really very little mainstream cutting games that people are playing. As soon as you have approval models, which are going to happen this year, you're going to light gasoline on, on everything uh, or, or pour gasoline on everything. Awesome. Totally agree. Thank you for that, Robbie. Thank you for being here. If you did enjoy this content, please do subscribe to the channel, comment below, like. We love getting your feedback. You can comment a question below. We might answer it in a future episode. With that, we will see you next time.